Hi, and welcome back to our next part on our dam. Um, as you can see, I came out off camera and I put on another coat of the PVA to put our barrier in place so that the um, epoxy resin when we pour it won't soak through the plaster and eat away at our foam board. So I'm pretty happy with it. You can see it's all dried now, nice and clear. Um, we have a whole paint, so that's what we're up to now, so we're going to paint. Um, I'm using some cheap acrylic paints. Um, they're just generic craft paint. Uh, I've got burnt umber, burnt sienna, and red oxide, the three colors I'm gonna use to do the dam. Um, we'll start with our darkest color, work through to our lightest. I'm going to use a sponge to apply it, um, and I'm gonna do some wet blending. Um, which is a, a technique that I use a fair bit on my layout to get rock faces and things to blend in the different types of colours that we're using to get our earth tones. So um, I'll start with the, the burnt umber. All I'm going to do is put a bit on a little bit of a palette here um, and use some water and apply it with the sponge. So get our sponge and dip it in our water. Which I've got here in a cup. I'll get some on the sponge and I'm just going to apply it onto the dam. Uh, you could use a brush, um, this is just a, a quicker method to get a bit more paint down and it comes in handy when you go to wet blend using the other colours rather than using a brush. And we just put it all the way down for our base. There you go. Now, today is a little bit cooler. I'm looking at around a 30 odd degree day today. So again, it's not that hot out here on the layout. And uh, being acrylic paints, they won't take long to dry. So our working time is a little bit diminished, but it's not too bad. I'm just going to wash off the sponge. And then with the base colour down, I'm just going to go to our next colour, which is the, uh, the Burnt Sienna. And put some of that on my palette. There we go. So this is a, a, just a lighter brown. Get it on my sponge and I'm just going to go through now and just blend it in with this one. And what I was going to do using these colours is give us a good mix uh, of uh, earth tones for the basis to put our water in underneath and then we'll blend in the colour on the rest of the land form, moving out onto the rest of the layout. Now you can see already most of that underlying darker brown is almost gone, but it's just stayed in uh, the deeper, darker parts of the, the dam. So we just keep working in with this colour. Try to get a nice coverage, cover up most of the white from the plaster underneath. Okay, so that's our second colour. As you can see, it's very quick. It doesn't take long at all. Um, very handy for working over large areas. The last colour I'm going to put in is some red oxide, um, which is a, a more of a, a reddish browny tinge to it. I'm not going to need a lot of this. This is just sort of going to be used for a bit more of a highlight sort of colour. So I'll get my sponge. Get a little bit on my sponge dab some of it off onto the palette. So I'm just dabbing, dabbing it off, more like a, a dry brushing sort of technique. 
and I'm just going to blend that in more so around the higher edges and leave the, uh, the deeper parts with the darker colour. Like I said, just to give us some varying tone through the dam. Now it's a very strong colour this red, so we don't want to go too overboard with it. Just like so. Get that in there. Alright, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some white and mix that back in with our, our darker colour, our brown, just to give it another shade uh, and to lighten it up a bit. So I'm just going to grab my brush for this. And I've got the white in there. I'm just going to mix that in. It'll give us a nice light brown colour. Go back to my sponge, and again, this one, I just dab off the excess onto the palette, and just go around the extreme higher points. And what I talk about with wet blending is while the paint's still, we're adding in the other colors. So what they do is they get a, a, an opportunity to mix uh, together a bit more, blend together, so you don't just have a stark color that's dominant everything sort of mixes together and just gives you that nice hue through the dam, through the earth tones and just helps it look a little bit more randomised rather than a solid block of colour. Because as anyone would know, when uh, you dig away at the earth you've got different layers of uh, sedimentary earth, it gives you different colours. So we don't just want one dominant brown or red or anything like that. And again, just leaving the, uh, the darker parts to be dominant down in the deeper parts of the dam. Just feather that out around the edge a bit. Like so. And then what I might do is take a little bit more white and just change the colour of my uh, red oxide a little bit, lighten that up just to do another shade in there, grab some of my red oxide, mix that in, just draw it out to the edge of the palette to give me that colour, grab my sponge, just pick some of that up, and we'll just oh, a bit of plaster there. Put that around the edge again. There we go. So basically, that paints the bottom of the dam, and puts the earth tones in, and then once this is dry, um, then the last thing to do, of course, is to make the resin up. Um, we'll tint the resin, the water colour, so to make it look like it's a bit of muddy water sitting in the dam that's run off. Um, and then we'll pour the resin and then that will give that nice watery smooth effect through the dam. And then later on I'll get the Mod Podge um, and I'll stipple the Mod Podge over the top of the dry resin and that will give us that uh, ripply water wave effect. So that's pretty much it for now. And we'll let that dry and uh, the next one will come back and we'll do the resin. So again, thanks for watching, um, like it, subscribe to the channel and uh, join me back on part three where I'll be doing the resin in the resin pour. So that's all from me from uh, Forest Creek Model Railway. Thanks for watching.